Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to go back in the Wayback Machine. We're going to look at uh, some Japanese reels and I'm going to tune up a Daiwa SS5000, one of my favorite reels of the time. And uh, it's just interesting. I got two of these in at the same time. One is the Olympic and uh, the other one is the Daiwa 5500. And I also had a Daiwa 2600C in the mix. So uh, these were probably 1980s-ish. Uh, the Olympic and the Daiwa competed with uh, the Penn Silver Series, the Ryobi so Silver Series and the like. They were both made in Japan. And uh, today we're going to focus on this one. I'll do a follow-on video with this. This one uh, I got for basically for a song. It's a ball bearing system. It's got a loose rotor in it. This is the Olympic now, the Olympic 600. It's got a loose rotor in it, and it makes a horrible grinding noise. Let's turn that off. Which is telling me that the single ball bearing in the ball bearing system is not no longer any good. I'm going to try and find a replacement because I do like this reel a lot. This one kind of lines up with the uh, Ryobi, and uh, may have been made in the same uh, same factory. I don't know. But that's another project for another day. <coughs> Today we're going to get started on the Daiwa SS5000. I'm a little bit hesitant with this one because I saw some grease on the uh, spool as I was taking the line off that looked like white lithium grease. And uh, that always makes me a little bit nervous. Otherwise the reel's turning fine. Let's take that clicker off. Turning fine, it's smooth. This has what I call the uh, the hammer bail. It's got a bail that's going to be launched by hitting the back end of the uh, reel handle. It flips very easily. It's got a collapsible handle that actually collapses, which means that it's been taken care of and it hasn't uh, gotten salt or the like in there. The real line on that was very old line. Um, my guess is it probably this reel probably hasn't gone fishing in. 10 years maybe. But at any rate, uh, that's my project for the day. As I get started, I like to start by taking off the exterior pieces. And when I do that, I like to thank our first responders and essential personnel for all it is that they do to keep us safe. That's all of our uniformed services, including fire, EMT, first aid, uh, and the like. And it also includes all of the folks behind the scenes in our supply chain and distribution. And a special shout out to teachers who are, uh, uh, many of them heading back to school or will be shortly. Thank you for what you do. Well, one of the things that's an interesting uh, indication of age is the handle. I'm guessing this is probably a rosewood handle and the, I guess you're not allowed to sell rosewood anymore, uh, rosewood products anymore. So. This one definitely came before that uh, became an issue. And I just wiped off that white lithium grease. As I mentioned, I saw a little bit of that on the line. That's probably where it came from. And uh, hopefully the, uh, the previous owner of this reel didn't just uh, have a fun day just squirting everything inside with that grease. So I recommend that if you do use um, greases for your reels, please use fishing reel grease. Yeah, we can see it on the click rotor here. It's kind of everywhere, and that's just top side. Maybe they didn't have the uh, the courage to go underneath. We never do know. I like to turn the handle. I want to make sure that uh, we don't have a through screw in there. Sometimes that screw is hidden. Sometimes you can see it. This one's missing the cap, but there is a through screw there. So we're going to take this cap off, and we're going to check to see if that. And sure enough, it does. It has a handle screw underneath there. So. We're going to go ahead and remove the handle by removing this screw. Don't assume that because that handle button on this side is not moving that you have a screw and handle. Always take a, a moment to check underneath that cap unless you're familiar with the reel and you know that that doesn't exist there. So we'll remove the screw for the handle. And what I like to do with that one is put it right back into the handle. That way it's easy enough for me to find when I go about... Uh, Putting this reel back together. This is a large saltwater reel, and uh, I'm trying to get this one and the Olympic ready for the upcoming striped bass fall season. It would be a nice uh, reel to take out in the surf. I'm going to put that handle and a lot of other parts into my parts tray. It's the bottom of a, a jug, 
and uh, that's going to enable me to find those pieces and parts when I need them. Okay, there's three side plate screws here. The Phillip head screws, we're going to go ahead and take them out. And uh, this one's not a Phillips head, it's a machine screw that kind of looks that way. It's can be accessed with the flat bladed screwdriver so it's always good to have different um, screwdrivers and, and wrenches and pliers and things at hand. A lot of you that watch my videos see the box of tools that I have behind and uh, that's because I want to keep everything that we have in reach as we uh, work on a reel. I don't want to put a reel down have to go search for a tool unless it's kind of an odd tool that I didn't expect to see. Uh, because sometimes you'll just lose your orientation and how the reel came came together or you may just uh, have a mental lapse there and forget something and the next thing you know you're in trouble in the reassembly. I'm just checking to make sure that the dog is off on this one. I'm <clears throat> not familiar with the underneath so uh, if that dog is off I want to make sure that uh, I can pull the, the gear out without disrupting that uh, override. Also, when I was taking this out, I noticed that I have two small screws and one long screw. And the long screw was coming out of the top here, so just good to know when we put it back. Okay, this is the inside of it. We have a ball bearing here that seems to be turning fine. We have a, a pretty good uh, solid, looks like brass gearing in here. And more importantly than not, we don't have any white lithium grease. So. I guess maybe it was just up top there where somebody gave it a good squirt and that's all good for me for sure. I'm going to take the screw that holds the cross wind block out so I can remove the axle shaft. That came out nice and easy. That's always a good thing because that tells you that you do not have a bent axle shaft. I'm going to do what I did with the handle. I'm going to take that screw and put that into the axle shaft. So I I know where to find that one right away. And a lot of people have different organization systems when it comes to how they take the pieces and parts off and, and manage them. This one works for me. If it works for you, great. If you have a different one, uh, some people will take them and line them up on a, uh, a bench or on a mat or something. That's all right. That works for me. Uh, whatever works for you, uh, use it. But I would recommend that you have a system where you can go in and take care of the uh, pieces and parts so that you don't lose them. Okay, crosswind block, crosswind or oscillating gear, main gear with two bearings on it, so this is a three ball bearing reel, and we're going up top now. I've just uh, used the wrench to, to loosen up the rotor nut that goes into my tray. The rotor should come off. And this system setup here is very similar to a setup for the, um, the pen reels. It's got an override to it, and it's got a friction-based anti-reverse dog. And I'm still trying to figure out what this is. It would seem to me that if this is an override here... Ah, there you go. So when, when we're in override mode here, you can flip it this way and achieve the same, same goals there. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Wow. All right, I'm going to take off the anti-reverse dog so that we can remove the collar of the bearing. Now this has not been worked on in a while, and it's uh, an older reel. If you feel any kind of hesitancy, maybe it's hard to move that screw, go ahead and hit it with penetrating oil before you continue. That'll work its way into the threads, and it'll enable you to get your, uh, your screws out without stripping them. That's your anti-reverse dog. There's a click ratchet that's next. That's what your anti-reverse dog works into. That's on a square. This one, for whatever reason, is being a little bit stubborn. Remember the orientation of that? I put it in top side. And then we have three screws holding on the balance of the assembly there. 
looks like this can come off too. Not sure. All right, that those appear to be Phillips head screws. So let's go ahead and take those out. And while we do that, I want to remind you that if you like these types of videos, please subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe, please hit the notification button. That way you'll see all of the, the reels that I'm working on, what the projects are that have come into my shop, and even a couple of things regarding my garage sale finds and that where I I'm out for a day and I find a, a unique reel that will become a future project. I'm doing the same thing here that I did before and that is to put the screws together so that I can identify if, if there's a different one in there in terms of length. In this case all three of these screws are the same so I'm going to take those and put those in a, a separate section of that arch tray and now we should be able to lift out the uh, that way there's a little spring that's interfering here I need to get that cleared there we go and this is your third bearing so everything on here says that the reel is in good condition other than it's uh, got some accumulated greases and the like that need to be cleaned up so let's go ahead and take care of business or sometimes what I refer to as doing the laundry I'm going to spray that bearing down. It just looks like it's got some superficial dry greases on there, so we'll get that done. I'm going to do the same thing with the pinion gear. And I'm going to wipe it off with a paper towel. Just to make sure. And when I tested this, these bearings were running fine. I'll do it again. I'll give it another spin test. That's that was nice got a lot of oil on there but we'll get that oil off in just a moment and then I'm going to use a hard fabric or bristle brush to clean out those channels some people, folks use tooth uh, brushes those are fine some people use the uh, the automatic ones and uh, I've done that too and that certainly will clear every piece of the, the gears uh, this one is done just fine now I'm checking the teeth to make sure that all the teeth are okay on that gear I'm going to go ahead and put some grease on there. I'm going to use a fishing reel grease. In this case, I'm using pen precision reel grease. <coughs> Again, I really don't care much about which grease you use, but I do care that it is a, a fishing reel grease when you're servicing fishing reels. As I said before, I was afraid that as I opened up this case, I was going to find some white lithium grease in there. And that does nothing but uh, collect a lot of dirt and grime and uh, make it generally difficult to uh, to work with. Okay, that bearing goes back on. Before I go too much further, I'm going to oil it. Today I'm going to use a uh, Lucas fishing reel oil. Again, same thing as the uh, piece with the, uh, the grease. Make sure that the oils are also fishing reel oils. And now we can go ahead Put the main piece back in. I guess there's just a little bit of grease left over in the cavity. I'll use a cotton swab for that. Next up then is going to be our bearing. And we had that little plate. That's why I, I separated that plate here to make sure that I could get it in without uh, too much of an issue. Align the holes. And now we can go for those three screws that we put in the parts tray. We know where they are. And one of the beauties about a parts tray is that these small pieces and parts that sometimes are hard to, to handle and easy to knock off on, in terms of a desk or something, well, that parts tray just holds them right there for you. One way to get those screws to hold is put a little bit of grease onto a screw onto the tip of your screwdriver. Looks like i got to realign this again. And then come on back in. Those of you that watch the video know that I have a fair issue with small pieces and parts, but while we're doing this, let me remind you, if you have a question on this fishing reel, or any reel in general, Maybe you're working on one and you're stuck and uh, have a general question about a reel maybe, how it performs or the applications of the reel or whatever. 
Uh, if you leave those questions in the comments section, I do try to uh, respond to them. Generally, I'll try and do that in the morning. So uh, if you uh, leave it there, that's the best way to get in touch with me. Some folks have been trying to call me uh, because the phone number is on my business card that follows. That's a little bit harder because once I get in the shop and start doing videos and working on projects, I really don't have a lot of time. Okay, just finishing up that last one then. Tighten them all down, make sure that they're, they're nice and secure. I'm still looking at this one. So this one is a top or bottom override system. Uh, if you uh, notice, we're off of that peg there. That's the same as having your anti-reverse dog locked out with the bottom switch. I guess it's just more convenient on top. You can notice how it goes to the off position when you release that. Kind of was puzzling me, but uh, puzzle solved. All right, now what we want to do is we want to get our little click ratchet that goes next. Get that on there. That's a piece of pot metal. And now when we go to install the anti-reverse, get the old grease off of there. This is a friction driven system, so you don't oil this. You need to make sure that these are close, but they don't need to be touching the prongs of each fork. And you need to put a, a tong or a tag end of each fork, one on each side, and then that'll you'll know your orientation is right. Once you split the difference there, come on over and, and kind of line it up. And then the first part is you got to get your ratchet onto the square. There we go. And then you can walk your anti-reverse dog back so that you can center the hole. Remember to keep those forks on. And start your, your screw. Go as much as you can. This has a shoulder on the screw now, so the shoulder is going to need to fit precisely in that hole. So if it's not, you're going to have to just kind of move it a little bit. Sort of like a bail spring on, on some of the other reels. You'll have a two-step. And then you can test it before you go any further. Just give it a spin and pull back in and make sure that it's setting. In this case, it's setting. And then that little piece to answer my question what that little spring was for, that's a little clicker there that you have to let you know that you're going out. All right, we've uh, greased up the, the top pinion gear. This case is very clean, but I'm just pulling that, that little bit of grease and oil remain in the bottom there, the old pieces of oil. I'm going to take my oil, I'm going to oil the entry point for that override on both sides. That'll keep that nice and fresh. Now we'll go over and clean up the, the back end of this reel. We're going to take our cotton swab. And we're going to get the old grease off of the inside of the oscillation gear. And if it needs an assist, if this was really dried grease, you go ahead and use some penetrating oil on there. In this case, uh, there's not much grease in there. What's in there is coming out easily. But uh, if you needed that, go ahead and use that penetrating oil as a degreaser. Check the teeth. Make sure that there's no chipped, cracked, or broken teeth. And then clean up the front side of the oscillation gear. And when we go to, to service this, we want to get grease on all sides. You're going to get grease on the back here because that's going to ride against the back of the case. It's a friction point. You're going to get grease into the teeth because they're going to intersect with the teeth on the back of the main gear. We're going to get grease onto the front of this because the oscillation block is going to slide on that. And then one more grease point is that stud on the inside of the case. Make sure that that's uh, greased up as well. Take the oscillation gear. When you put that in, make sure that the stud is down towards the bottom because you won't be able to install the screw for the crosswind block if the, uh, the stud is out of sync there. Okay, here's your crosswind block. We're going to make sure that we get some grease in that. And you need to get that on the face. That goes sliding under. Mount it on top of the stud, sliding under, just like that. 
This is a beautiful main gear. There's no question that this is not on the uh, the cheaper side of the equation in terms of what was being made in the 70s. This is not pot metal. This is real brass. You hardly see that in today's market, no less back then. I imagine that this reel was fairly expensive as compared to as some of the products that were on the market at the time. Just a beautiful gear all around. Just clean the rest of that up. Okay, we have our gear that's going to drive our crosswind block that goes on next. like that. Once you're cleaned up you can go ahead and put new grease onto the teeth. You're doing the same thing here. You're checking to make sure that there's no distortions in the teeth. And get grease onto the back of the gear that's going to drive the oscillation gear and put a little grease onto the, the stud. Wipe down that bearing. Again I've tested these. They're right there beautifully after all these years. I'm never sure if they've been replaced or not. In this case this bearing is beautiful and working fine. And then I noticed there's a little clip that's going to go into the handle side nut or the non-handle side nut when we got to do that. All right this side is done so we can go ahead and put that in. And what we really want to do is put that bearing in first. And we can put that gear shaft in next. That's the easiest way to merge them. Take our bail, make sure it's clean underneath. Bail, rotor assembly, everything. Clean it up, make sure it's clean underneath. Hold your main gear as you go to install. And I like to do it this way because it doesn't push down the, the pinion gear. We have that nut next. You need to do that before you can put your axle shaft in. that tighten that up nicely okay we have one more bearing that needs to be cleaned here All right, put some oil in that get that onto the reel here we're coming closer here's our axle shaft and remember we put our little screw inside the axle shaft for the safekeeping we'll take that off now a light coating of grease on this. Don't go crazy because when it goes through the pinion gear it'll kind of scrape everything off. There's a tight tolerance up here. Merge it into the crosswind block below. Flat side out. And line it so that the hole in the axle shaft and the hole in the crosswind block meet. And then we can install that screw that I missed with there probably count the number of times that I get a, a small screw in on the first uh, shot just never never seems to work for me but I do remember this one was magnetic I don't even need grease for that one that says it's not a stainless screw all right we'll just tighten that up time to put the side case on Nice metal reel. So this is kind of the last hurrah, if you will, for metal reels. Then they went on to the graphite side plates, which we've all come to know and love. And now we've seen some of them, some of the reels have gone back to metal, like the uh, Pen series has gone back to metal cases because the graphite cases have flexed. and. Uh, caused issues with bigger fish. So there's advantages to both. The disadvantage of a metal case is it weighs more. Okay, just finishing up now, tightening that last screw. We'll go up and we'll service the drags and then we'll give it a good test. <coughs> I did notice there's some corrosion inside this override lever here. Not much you can do about that. That's kind of a molded plastic piece there. A little penetrating oil will help 
dissolve some of the salts that are there. Go ahead and put the handle back on at this point. Again, I'll remove the screw because I know where it is. If you want, you can just put a light coating of grease on there. That way it'll stop it from seizing inside the main gear at a later time. We have that little washer there that belongs on the end of this nut. Or screw, rather. Let's go ahead and put that on. And we can close this up. So it looks like on that Olympic, I'm going to have to find a cap or just live with the exposed screw. It's not a big deal, but uh, there can be some water that will go in there that would be stopped if you had the, uh, the side plate uh, cap like this one does. All right, let's go over and take care of the drag system then. The drag system is a top drag. This is the one we saw that uh, lithium grease in. It has a, a hex ring clip. You pry it. It's a spring, so please be careful as you do that. Then you just want to make sure that we can take all of these out. Well, these have received the full treatment of the lithium grease. It also looks like it's perhaps the wrong washer in there. Just going to clean the cavity. You don't want any, any junk underneath there. This takes the brunt of the... Um, waters, salt waters and the like, because it's a top drag system and when you're reeling the line's coming in this way and the first thing to do when it's throwing water off is to, to cut into this bowl here. All right, that one needs a little bit of cleaning. That's a hard washer. So sometimes this is best done putting it back onto the spool, uh, the spool back onto the shaft. We'll go ahead and do that. So you have a hard washer and then you have a keyed washer. This one has the letter D, so there's going to be one flat side on that shaft. Go ahead and do that. Next one up then is going to be a Teflon washer. You don't need to do anything with a Teflon washer other than put it in. Then you have your eared washer goes next. That's the middle washer in the three washer setup. Same thing, another Teflon washer. So Teflon washers by themselves are self-lubricating. They're a petroleum product. You don't need to do anything other than make sure they're clear and smooth. The last washer, and we can take our hex ring and center that into that groove that's inside the spring, that, or inside the spool rather. Press down, make sure that it's in there. And that's a retention clip. It doesn't do anything but keep the washers inside the spool. Last up then, the drag knob. We'll go ahead and put that back on. And we'll give this reel a test. We'll make sure that the washers are holding first. Yep, they're nice and firm. There you go. There you go, very nice reel. That just reminded me, even though we have a, a slam bale, if you will, I like to put a little bit of oil inside the track to just facilitate that. A little bit of oil onto the line roller. And even though to a lesser extent uh, over here, that's a dead end, but go ahead and put that on there as well. Work it in a little bit. That'll just save wear and tear as you come by to slam it over here. It will make it operate easier. So that's it. That's the Daiwa. Uh, 5000 SS, uh, beautiful reel all around. Ah, there's the answer. So we have a, a anti-reverse when it's on here. We've got the click, click, click. You can shut the click off here and still have the anti-reverse by, uh, by leaving it below. So that's, there you go. Innovation at its best one or the other. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. If you uh, want to see more, please subscribe. Please stay safe, stay well, have a good day, and keep watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.